Hey, what's up guys? So you're sitting there scratching your head, wondering what you could build with just a couple of basic parts. An OLED display and a Nano. I mean, there's really not much you could do, right? What could you make that's kind of cool with just a couple parts like this? Well, what if you made an incredibly tiny frequency counter? It's a lot easier than you may think. So let's zoom in and we'll put it together. Let's start by taking five volts from our Arduino. to the 5 volt rail and the same thing with ground from the ground rail to the ground pin on the Arduino. Now let's hook up our OLED VCC to our 5 volt rail and ground To our ground rail SCL to A5 and SDA to A4 So there we have almost all of our connections made in less than a minute. Couple more connections. Let's take another ground from the bottom here because we're going to need something to attach our signal to. And we're going to read the signal on pin digital 5. So I'm just going to poke that in there so that we can put some alligator clips on it. That's it. That's the whole thing. Let's go check out the code, then we'll come back and play. Here's the code for our Arduino macro frequency counter. Now here are the notes. Signal needs to be logic level. High 5 volts, low 0 volts. Input can only be on D5, and you will not be able to use analog write on 3, 9, 10, or 11. Now, this library that we're using here, freakcount.h, there's a link here where you can find it by this guy whose parents gave him a fantastic first name. To install said library, you need to go to Sketch, Include Library, Manage library. Wait for the thing to finish its hoodie duty. And type in here. Hello, I'm typing. Thank you. And there you'll see it here, a freak count. Now there's also a freak measure, which is if you're looking at signals below a kilohertz. So your choice. All right, so we have three includes wire, which we need because we're using I squared C for our OLED, the Adafruit SSD 1306, which is a driver for our OLED and frequent freak count which we just talked about. That OLED driver requires an OLED reset. It's on pin 4 which is the default blah blah blah. Then we're going to create an instance of the Adafruit SSD 1306 library called display using the argument OLED reset. Then we're down into our setup where we're going to begin the display with the command display begin 
SSD 13 of switch six switch cap VCC, which is some black magic that Lady Ada did. Here's the key: if you're not using an Adafruit OLED, this is probably going to be your hex address, OX3C. If you've got a new OLED that you've bought from far off lands and it's not working, try adding that little bit to your setup. Then display display will show the Adafruit logo. Bask in what is Lady Ada's glory. Enough basking. We'll clear the display and we will begin our counter. Now down here in the main loop of the program, we simply say, if frequency count is available, do all of this. Well, what is all of this? First, we're going to create a float called count, and it will be populated with what's in the frequency read. That will be your count. Then we're going to create a float called period, period, which is the inverse of count. And then we always clear the display. We're going to set our text size to 1 because we're displaying a lot of crap here. Display set text color to white because it's the only color available. Cursor to the upper left. We'll print our header. Skip a line. Then we'll print the, the uh, header for the line, which is frequency, and some spaces so everything lines up nice and pretty. And then display print count, which is our frequency. Right after that, we'll print the frequency in hertz. So if we're at 50 uh, kilohertz, you're going to see 50,000 hertz. Um, if we're at 5 megs, you're going to see 5 million hertz. Display print. Uh, okay, on our hertz is a print line, so we drop down a line, then we do display print period, which is our next calculation, and we print the period times a thousand, which turns it into milliseconds. We display the milliseconds, and then we show everything in the buffer, and that's it. Let's go play with it. All right, I've got my function generator all nice and set up, and it's running. You can see we are outputting a 10 kilohertz square wave of 5 volts. So let's grab some connectors and hook this up to our Arduino. Sorry about that, might have been a bit of a rough trip there. All right, first of all, let's power up the Arduino. Since the code is already uploaded, there we have our Adafruit Industry Splash and our frequency counter. Now, this flickering you see is created entirely by the camera. When you look at this in real life, there is no flickering. So I attach our ground lead there and our frequency pin here. And there you see we have 10,000 hertz frequency and 0.1 millisecond period. So if I adjust up, there's 80,000. Whoops, hold on, wrong channel. Try this again. There's 80,000. And we adjust down. All works very nice. Now what I've done is I have synced this to We'll have to zoom out there, won't we? Oh no, I got switched over to channel 2, which I had on. There we go. So there's channel 2 on the scope showing our signal. And if we bring up the measure window, we can see. We have our period and our frequency and everything jives very nicely with what we've got here. So how about that? 
a very, very simple Arduino frequency counter. Super small. I mean, if we take a look at the size of this thing, the whole thing from one end to another is two and three quarter inches or what seven centimeters battery power this thing put it in a small plastic case and you got the world's smallest portable frequency counter I like it I think it's pretty cool so what else do you guys think you could do with this I'm looking for suggestions post them down below if you like this give me a thumbs up comment share and don't forget to subscribe